session closing down about four tenths of a percent. Well, it's a little bit of a strange session, not only because we closed down 0.4% and there were light volumes going through with $3.6 billion traded, but in terms of sector performance, it was, uh, it was quite a strange session as well. For most of the day, we saw the growth areas gaining ground, areas like the materials, the industrial and the consumer discretionary sectors. By the end of the session, only two sectors had finished in the black, and that was information technology and the discretionary sectors. But it was really those defensive areas which pulled down our market today we saw the utilities and the telecom space some of the worst performing areas together with the banks dragging on our market so while we saw the market down by 0.4 percent it was very much uh, it was very different from your typical risk off days of course our loss today comes after a positive performance on Wall Street on Friday after a solid set of job numbers and that's because of those China trade deficit numbers out for February which came out over the weekend on one side of the coin slower growth rates coming through from China um, than the markets expecting but on the flip side that increases expectations and we'll see a cut in the reserve ratio requirement or in interest rates in China so altogether a pretty slow day on the Australian share market and a little bit of a strange one at that and reading sort of various notes about it and even people calling in and writing in here those the, the growth targets production sort of target uh, benchmark that the targets that they have often described as rather ambitious I suppose and need a lot to go right for them and is it a stock that that you like, that you would favour if somebody was looking for an iron ore play? The fact that we have seen iron ore prices stabilising is a massive po positive for Fortescue as it ramps up from 55 million tonnes per annum up to 95 million tonnes per annum and then up to 155 million tonnes per annum and I think Standard & Poor's really um, citing that, uh, that stabilisation that we've seen in iron ore prices being a key reason why they've lifted our Fortescue's credit rating there and I think that's the key for all of the commodity plays that we do see some sort of stabilisation in prices. We are now seeing copper prices near four month high so that's a positive there as well so one eye on China and one eye on the prices and the other eye of course on production and as Fortescue ramps up it's in for another positive upgrade if it gets to that run rate of 30 million tons per quarter at the moment it's running at 55 million tons per annum so if we do see it running at about 120 million tons then San Poor's indicating that it will look at another upgrade of Fortescue's rating but in terms of iron ore if we have a look at the key uh, reason why it's used it's in steel production and of course that's being driven by the urbanization of China and that's why the growth numbers coming out of China are so important but Fortescue today running on the back of I guess a, a little bit of de-risking in terms of its credit profile as uh, that it, credit, it gets that credit upgrade and the stock really rising on the back of that. In comments, uh, Dow Jones uh, Newswise interview with uh, the uh, Asia ANZ CEO. Uh, not surprising a lot of the, the interview focused on expansion in Asia, a target to double its network and expand its workforce by hundreds in the coming decades. I, I suppose the the focus on Asia is nothing new for them, but good to see them continuing to at least really ramp up that expansion. ANZ has really differentiated itself from the other big four banks in the fact that its growth is tied to expansion in Asia and the growth coming out of Asia as well. And of course, recently we heard that they would be the first out of the big four banks here in Australia to get that yuan retail uh, deposit uh, license. And that retail uh, yuan license allows them to uh, take uh, currency deposits, uh, mortgages, and also wealth management services and products in China. So they're really going to use that to ramp up their operations in China. That interview with Dow Jones Newswires indicating they're looking at more than doubling their outlets in China. So it is. Uh, good to see ANZ sticking to its strategy. It is the only one out of the big four which has strongly tied its growth strategy uh, to China and of course with uh, Europe probably pulling out funds because of the uh, capital ratios which are being imposed on it by July this mm -hmm. year what we are seeing is probably an opportunity for some of the other institutions around uh, Asia to really benefit in terms of Asian growth so ANZ some opportunities there with some European financial institutions probably are pulling out funds out of Asia and someone's got to step into that space and looking at expansion into China through uh, the retail outlet. A little bit later in the show but I really want to talk about the the reaction we saw on markets earlier and that was of course uh, Glencore uh, looking at a, a pretty big bl uh, play in that soft commodity space of course uh, the company also listed here in Australia has uh, Australian listings but really sort of lifted all those soft commodity players in particular Glencore. 
James, a lot of the topics that we've been talking about today have been driven by the population growth and then, of course, the needs in terms of food, fuel and commodities. And the Glencore is a big company in terms of commodities and especially in terms of uh, food, uh, fuel as well as commodities. And I guess this is just another expansion into that area. Now, there have been media reports around that Glencore, uh, together with another company, Cargrill, could be looking at a play for Vitara, which is a Canadian-based agricultural company, but which, of course, has arms around the world. In fact, Vitara, quite um, active in Australia as well. It bought AWB grain in 2009 for $1.6 billion. And, of course, Glencore itself has a trading arm here in Australia as well. Glencore, in fact, is responsible for about 8.7% of our grain trade around the world. But this is, a, this is probably a story that will continue to develop. We've seen lots of merger and acquisition activity in that commodity space. As China urbanizes what it needs, it's probably steel, iron ore in order to construct and urbanize. And of course, the other key issue is food. So we did see Vitara shares absolutely soaring on the back of that speculation that we could see Glencore and Cargill coming in with an offer. It shares jumping by more than 30% on the Aussie market. Michael.